It's more than 20 years since Steven Spielberg brought Jurassic Park to life on the big screen. And now, of course, it is back. The franchise has shaped how the general public thinks about dinosaurs. But facts aren't always Hollywood's number one priority. So how does the new film Jurassic World stack up against the science of these ancient beasts? Brian, uh, let's talk about some of the specifics of the things that the movies get wrong. Let's start with the, uh, <laughs> the mosquito, the, the taking the DNA of a, of a dinosaur out of a mosquito. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jack sort of addressed this a little while ago. It just it doesn't quite work. One of the I main problems is that DNA degrades upon death. It almost has a half life, almost like ra ra like uh, radioactive material does, and it only seems to last even under the most perfect conditions for about six million years or so. So, like sixty million years too far to even get to the last of the non-avian dinosaurs. So just DNA is not the route that we're going to be able to go to uh, you know study you know the actual animals and possibly revive them. Jack, uh, Dilophosaurus, uh, not accurately depicted in the movies? No, no. Actually, Dilophosaurus is, a, is an animal we have very few specimens of. Uh, they are bigger than the one in the movie, but we needed one in the movie that, that could get inside of a, uh, a vehicle with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were juveniles too. They had to start small. So, <laughs> right. So you either have to right. make a very, very big vehicle, or you have to make a very small Dilophosaurus. Well, Dilophosaurus was a great run to be fictionalized because we just know so little about it. So, you know, putting a putting a thrill around it, and you know, I mean, it's it just it, it was just a it was a good one for fictionalization. What about the size of Velociraptors? Well, you know, we keep every year we find every 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 once in a while we find bigger and bigger dinosaurs of virtually all species. We know that dinosaurs grew through most of their life. Not, I mean, they have a absolute size, but but they most dinosaurs died before they actually reached skeletal maturity. So we're always going to, I think, find bigger and bigger specimens of virtually all dinosaurs. Velociraptors pushing the envelope, but we actually used the animal Dinonychus. Uh, we just gave him a different name. Uh, actually, people have argued whether Dinonychus and Velociraptor are the same animal, so we figured we could do that one too. Brian, in the in the piece you wrote, you discuss uh, sort of giving due credit to science and scientists, uh, but uh, you know all of the advances that have happened in the interim. You write this: uh, part of what made the original Jurassic Park so wonderful was that, despite some inaccuracies, the blockbuster and instantly popularised the image of fast and smart dinosaurs that paleontologists had been piecing together. There was no going back to the stupid tail dragging, swamp bound reptiles of the past. For Jurassic World, that's the new film, to ignore everything paleontologists have done in the past 20 years in favor of visual continuity felt like a hell of a sign. Oh, no, I, no that's not true. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> that, that's, I'm going to jump in that's, here. Those are, those well, are, I'm going to definitely something. jump in here. <laughs> yeah, Lightly yeah. taken out. Uh, <laughs> Brian, you make your case, and then Jack can tear you apart like a velociraptor. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> well, I'd say that that's, that's sort of what members of the community felt. And there are you know, some updates through it, but that wasn't the important thing, especially since now uh, in Jurassic World, you know, it's sort of almost the, they've been engineered to be this way from the beginning, that they're made cooler, bigger, faster, with more teeth. What I was sort of referring to in that portion was the feeling that a lot of people had, like, that they should have feathers, that they should have, you know, some adjustments made to them. The new film takes care of that you know, issue. But I know a lot of people felt it was sort of a missed opportunity to, you know, sort of bring about uh, the emerging image of fluffy, fuzzy dinosaurs. Jack? Well, first off, it's all one story. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all the same story. So it would be really hard to figure out how to bring back dinosaurs in 1993. Uh, and then have those same dinosaurs look completely different in Jurassic Park 4 when, when they're all the same dinosaurs. It's, you know, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 1 and the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 4 are the same one. I mean, we're, we're talking about the same animal, basically. So, so, you know, putting feathers on it or fluff on T-Rex, we don't even know for sure if T-Rex had fluff. I mean, we don't, we don't know that. And... When it comes to Velociraptor, we we don't really know too much about its feathers either. I mean, probably had some on its arms, and probably had some 
accoutrements down the center of its spine, but you know we don't actually have velociraptors with feathers. So again, you know it's um, you know the velo- I don't know I don't know what Brian thinks, but those velociraptors look pretty darn cool in Jurassic World. <laughs> so I have a question for you. I have a question for you, Jack. Then um, I was wondering whether it was more about a scariness factor. And that if you dress Velociraptor in feathers, um, does it just look like a load of big turkeys running around in a field and thus becoming much, much less scary? Well, we, we have it explained. B.D. Wong explains it in Jurassic World, why the dinosaurs look like they do. And just explain that, Jack, for people who haven't seen the film. Well, I mean, just, you know, I mean, so... So dinosaurs are brought back in 1993, but we don't have the complete genome. We don't have the complete DNA, and so we have to add other kind of animals to it. I mean, that was said right in the very get-go of the whole movie thing. And so um, we, we know that if we have to add other DNA to an animal, it can end up looking different than it would have if you had the whole genome. 